Good day there viewers, welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. My name is Cliff and I'm a gem cutter from Australia. A warm welcome to all my regular subscribers and viewers and if you happen to be new to my channel I'm certainly glad that you can join me for the first time as you watch the process of synthetic sapphire being faceted. Before I start faceting the sapphire I would like to personally thank Mark from the USA for sending me some Herkimer diamonds. Herkimer diamonds are totally unique to the USA so this is a really generous gift so thank you Mark and this will be proudly displayed in my display cabinet. So let's get back on to discussing what synthetic sapphire is and the most common method of creating lab grown synthetic sapphire is by the flame fusion method. So not being a scientist or lab technician, I'll try to explain very simply how this sapphire is created. So basically powdered chemicals, aluminium oxide, is dropped through a high temperature flame and the molten powder repeatedly falls from the flame onto a rotating pedestal. And this creates the synthetic crystal called the boule, which can be later faceted into a gemstone. So in addition to this process, to create the various colours, additional other minerals are added to the aluminium oxide. For example, with the blue sapphire, the use of titanium and iron is used. To create ruby, chromium is used. Although I'm not the biggest fan of synthetic gems, but when it comes to synthetic gems, they still have the same chemical, optical, physical properties of their natural counterparts and they are more cost effective and I think that's one of the main reasons why most faceters do facet synthetic gems. So in today's episode I'll be faceting my own design and because it's still in the test phase it's a great excuse to be using synthetic sapphire as opposed to the natural gem. So to begin I'll drop in a 3D computer generated GIF of what the gem should look like and then I'll drop in the design sequence so you get a rough idea of what I'm doing during the video. So we begin with the 3D virtual preform which is attached to the 3D virtual dop stick and we're going to be faceting the pavilion first so we're going to be cutting a series of pavilion facets all to a center point. So once the first four facets have been cut to a center point, there's a series of other facets also cut on the pavilion. Each one of these facets need to be cut to a true center point too. This has to be done perfectly. If not, then when you're cutting the crown, everything will be out of alignment. So the next step will be to cut the girdle facets to depth, and these will need to be cut accurately also. So this gives you the basic outline of the girdle and the pavilion facets. The next step is to move on to the crown facets. So we're ready to go through the steps of the virtual crown. And I love designs that are shaped like eyes. I always have. But what makes this particular design really unique within the faceting designs of eyes is that the table of the design, which is actually shaped like an eye, which becomes the pupil, is facing in the wrong direction. Most tables are facing horizontally, but I've got this one shifted opposite and that is highly unusual when it comes to these designs and I'll explain a little bit about that later on why I did this. Often with these bulls, they're split in half and then sawn into little segments as the piece I have so it only leaves one logical place for the dop stick to be glued to. So as I'm setting up I thought I would call the name of this design Poseidon's Eye as it's appropriate because the colour of the gem is like the colour of the ocean. 
So this particular design, as mentioned earlier, is a little bit unique in terms of how the table facet that looks like an eye is facing. Many years ago, there was a design called the Pharaoh's Eye. In my opinion, no one has ever successfully faceted that design because it's unfaceable. You just cannot create that design. It really was based on a folly. Having said that, many faceters have tried to facet the Pharaoh's Eye or recreate the faceting design but on each attempt the actual table the eye facet has been horizontal and it's always intrigued me because I've always wanted to create a similar eye where it's facing in the opposite direction so I've done it um, this means that the girdle outline is uneven and that was one of the issues with the Pharaoh's eye also who knows, one day somebody may actually facet the Pharaoh's eye according to the true nature of that design. I do believe it was a folly to confuse the faceter, but it is the holy grail of many of the faceting designs whether it could be done or not. Anyway, while I've been rambling on about the Pharaoh's eye, meanwhile I've used a 100 grit diamond disc to do a quick rough out of the pavilion facets these are the Pavilion 1 facets, now you see the Pavilion 2 facets and the following two scenes I've cut out the Pavilion 3 and Pavilion 4 facets and my intent is really just to do a quick preform with the 100 grit disc and then I'll move on to the other finer grade discs. So continuing on with the basic rough out, I'm going to create a rough girdle outline. So there we have it, we've used the 100 grit diamond lap and pretty much from now on I'll just be using my 600 and 800 grit and we'll be doing final polishes. So I've changed out the 100 grit diamond lap and I've moved on to a fairly worn 800 lap and this lap is really good because it virtually will get me to the polishing stage. I'm very confident that it will. In the following scenes you'll see all the sequences of how I've faceted the pavilion and the girdle outline just using my 800 grit disc. Incidentally as a side note I've noticed while faceting this particular sapphire that it is as hard as nails. It has a Mohs hardness like natural sapphire around 9 but this synthetic stuff will be hard wearing and for those people who are interested in faceting it or even buying it, it would make a really good resilient gem 
which would be cost effective because many of us aren't as rich as TV personalities so sometimes we need to look at something that is less cost and equally as rewarding visually and hard wearing when it comes to gems. So on to the polishing phase of the pavilion and using my favourite combination in the last couple months, the Herco Valve Oil on a tin lap with the 50,000 grit diamond compound and this stuff once it starts to dry out a bit it really starts to cut through any pre-polish and I feel 100% confident that it will work on sapphire sapphire is not that easy to polish you get orange peel and you've got to get through that orange peel you'll see little speckles on the surface and sometimes that can take a little bit to polish out but with this Herco valve oil and the tin lap and 50,000 diamond grit I feel very confident it will cut through it easily. In the following scenes you'll see that I've polished the facets in the same sequence that I've cut them in and the Herco with the 50,000 diamond compound so far is doing a great job. The first four large facets are usually the hardest to polish and then all the smaller ones a lot easier. And yes, there was a bit of orange peel, which means you just got to take a little bit longer polishing. But when it comes to sapphire, you're not wearing out as much of the gem during the polishing stage because it is pretty hard, so it takes a fair bit to cut through it. Onto the secondary transfer where the original dop stick is placed into a transfer jig. Another brass dop stick is glued onto the gem using a two part epoxy. Then when it's glued on overnight the original dop is removed and then we have the transfer complete. So we're ready to start faceting the crown. So just like the pavilion I'll start off removing quite a bit of material from the crown using a 100 grit diamond lap and then I'll move on to my finer grade laps. Here you can see I've used my 100 grit diamond lap trying to remove as much material as possible and as I get closer to the girdle outline and you can see from this side view that at some point I will need to shift down to my 800 grit lap as you can see here. You will get a lot of chipping with a 100 grit lap so don't get too close to that girdle outline. In the following scenes you'll see that I've cut the rest of the crown facets and then following that I will polish all the crown facets using the same tin lap Herco valve oil and 50,000 grit diamond compound. If anyone is interested in wanting this design just drop an email to me. My email will be in my about section or in the description. In the following scenes you'll see that I've polished all the crown facets in a sequential order. So this means that once again we are getting closer to the end of another video and closer to the final reveal. For those of you who do not know, the final reveal is where I take the gem out and you see it on a rotator and you get to see what it looks like fully complete. So it's goodbye to all my regular subscribers and viewers, thank you for all your comments. Wherever you may live on this planet, I wish you guys all the best. And to all my new subscribers, those people who've tuned in for the first time, feel free to ask some questions. That's what this channel is about, hopefully to encourage people to want to learn the art form of faceting. So it's over and out from me and take care everybody. It's bye for now.